If you want to see some destination in the 21st century, you just need to click a mouse button a couple of times. You can virtually travel to another continent, enjoy the views of beautiful waterfalls, mountains or deserts. But the saying goes that it is better to see something once than to hear about it a thousand times. And I'm ready to confirm this. Agzer is right, nothing can compare with personal experiences and emotions. And when you start traveling, it will be difficult to stop. It is planned to turn Burabai into a world-class resort by attracting funds from private investors. And the level of service leaves much to be desired. It must be admitted that Burabai has recently turned into a commercial facility. Burabai does not need special advertising. People come here both from Russia and abroad. Therefore, prices for goods, food and accommodation have risen here. Let's compare current prices with last year's, before the pandemic. There was a time when prices for a small house for four to five people reached 80, 90,000 tenge. We have witnessed this. And in good times, prices did not exceed 15 to 20,000 tenge. Looking at this, one thinks that the greater the demand, the more expensive the supply. This year I went to Burabai, where two room apartments were offered for 8,000 tenge because there was no demand, no people, borders were closed. I wonder how much the rest in Burabai will cost us when the borders are closed, which is included in the Republican map of sacred places of Kazakhstan and has great historical and cultural significance. Due to the fact that Burabai is located in the north of Kazakhstan, the weather is changeable here. For example, yesterday it was sunny and it was 30 degrees of heat, but today the sky is covered with clouds and it is raining. And despite this, we have now come to the Ablai Khan Meadow. Let's explore the beauty of this place together. Ablai Khan's meadow is a small place among the forest, a hundred meters from the shore of Lake Auliyakol. In the northeast of the meadow is the Ogjet Pass Rock. In the north and northwest, the Kokshitau Mountain. There is a parking lot nearby. From here, tourists go on excursions around the surroundings with their guides. From this place, Ablai Khan and his soldiers kept an eye on the enemies to ensure safety. In those days, the enemy could attack on the sly. To avoid being caught off guard, the warriors constantly watched from here. In the novel The Flashing Meteor by Sabit Mukhanov, the Tsarist officer mentioned the Abilai Khan Meadow in his reports. He wrote that since the enemy often attacked in the summer, the Khan's headquarters was stationed in a meadow in the forest near the Ogjet Pass Rock, and the rock itself was a natural observation tower. Abilai made Kokshetau his residence for a reason. The terrain is perfect for waging a battle with superior enemy forces. On this territory, the Khan mobilized the United Khan Kazakh troops to fight back the attack from the east achieved complete liberation and independence for his people. At the altitude of 120 meters from the stele of Ablai Khan, the Khan's throne is located. Here, Ablai Khan exercised his rule, uniting three juzes. In our time, tourists walk around the stele seven times and make wishes. Of course, this is everyone's choice, but my personal opinion is that in such a wonderful wonderful place with such beautiful nature, just a walk is already good for health. What is the origin of a ruler whose throne is still honored? Ablai's real name is Abil Mansur. He was born in 1711 in the family of Yuali Sultan. Genghis Zid by origin, Ablai belonged to the older branch of the descendants of the founder of the Kazakh Khanate, Kanjani Bek. The Jungars killed Ablai's father and massacred his entire family. Abil Mansur was saved by a servant, Oraz, who brought him to the village of Tolibi. The word Ablai was initially a battle cry and later became the name of the newly elected Khan of all Kazakh Jews.
Осы киелі жерде менің есіме, мен естіген бір аңыз түсті. In this sacred place, I remembered another legend. I don't know if this is true, but legend is legend. Ablai Khan, depending on how his camel behaved before the battle, knew whether he would win or lose in the battle. Ол бұлай болған, шайқас болып жатқан жерге, егер түйе сол жаққа басын бұрып жатса, Аблайхан өзің жерге. In general, if the camel lay down on the battlefield, turning his head to the left, there will be victory. And if he does not turn, there will be defeat or some kind of misfortune. Онда женгілес немесе бір қайғы қасырет келеді деп топшылаған екен. After all, Ablai was a camel driver in childhood. Probably he understood their habits very well and honored camels as sacred animals. But in 1991, a stally was erected here in honor of the 280th anniversary of the famous Khan. It seems it is already an established rule to take a photo next to the stally of Ablai Khan. Therefore, we also followed this rule and remembered about our competition. Now I will take a picture and you will have to repeat it and post it on social networks with the hashtag across the Kazakh land. Ablai Khan was a superhero of his time. He was so cool that he refused to take the oath in St. Petersburg to maintain political independence. Locals say that Ablai Khan's meadow has its own might. People claim that after a long stay in the meadow, the human body is renewed. Scientists have not confirmed the anti-aging effect, but it is known that the air temperature in the meadow is always several degrees higher than in Burabai. There is another natural miracle medicine in Burabai to fight old age and ailments. This is mare's milk, kumis. Kumis is used to treat diseases of the gastrointestinal tract, tuberculosis and anemia. And the beginning of Kumis treatment in Burabai was laid in the first decade of the 20th century. Such an opportunity appeared in 1910 when the first clinic was opened on the territory of the Burabai Resort. The guests of the medical institutions were treated not only with kumis cocktails, but also in combination with air masses. The tradition which was born in the distant Botai by the carriers of the Botai culture in the 6th, 4th millennium BC continues to this day. The inhabitants of villages located near Burabai Burabai, these are the villages of Kemiznao, Madeniyet, and Kojabatir continue the long tradition of their ancestors. In the meantime, I am young and healthy. I will travel further. I'll leave you with Adilat for a while. He has something to show. I like to receive information about a particular place from different sources, so I plan to explore Mangistau from all possible angles. Today I will get acquainted with the history of the region in the local history museum. Mangistau, Mangistau Regional Local History Museum was opened in 1975. This museum, located in Micro District 9, has a huge number of halls. Our museum is a cultural center where a lot of different events take place together with the People's Assembly Assembly of Kazakhstan. We also work together with educational organizations. The museum has an excellent exposition. We were shown the Hall of Archaeology, which presents the mankind development history in Mangistau from the Paleolithic period to the 14th, 15th centuries, based on historical artifacts. But the history hall reflects the life and main occupations of the region's population until the beginning of the 20th century. We saw the original decorative and applied art of the Kazakhs of Mangistau, national handicrafts of local artisans, a yurt with decoration and masterpieces of art by masters of bone, wood and stone carving. We had a look at the rich collection of national jewelry made of precious metals and stones, which is the pride of the museum.
but the history hall reflects the life and main occupations of the region's population until the beginning of the 20th century. We saw the original decorative and applied art of the Kazakhs of Mangistau, national handicrafts of local artisans, a yurt with decoration and masterpieces of art by masters of bone, wood and stone carving. We had a look at the rich collection of national jewelry made of precious metals and stones, which is the pride of the museum. At the moment, a new museum has been built on the territory of our city in the newest neighborhoods, where new halls are also being built and opened. The museum is called Abish Kekelbaev, so the first hall, which was opened in 2019, is a hall dedicated to Abish Kekelbaev in honor of his 80th birthday. Discovery of oil and gas sources triggered the industrial development of Mangistau region. New cities were constructed, including Janaozen, Aktau, the village of Jantibai, where the first fountain of oil started in 1961. As a child, I wanted to be an oil worker. Oh, my dream has not come true. I became the host of a travel show and I can tell you about this difficult but exciting profession. We are in the hall dedicated to the oil industry that offers a full information about the people who worked in this field, about geological scientists, honored oil and gas workers, and here you can also learn about the first geological expeditions, about industrial oil and gas fields in Mangishla. In general, I was fascinated by all this, probably because I'm the target audience. We welcome a huge number of visitors, mainly of course school children. In the summer, these are naturally tourists who come from almost the entire territory of the former Soviet Union. The history of our region is of great interest. That's all about oil. Next, we will have an exciting trip on a yacht. Don't switch! I don't know if it's good or bad, but on the day of our arrival in Aktau, the rocky path was closed for repairs. So, we decided to watch it from the yacht. You cannot imagine a better view. This cape was named White Rocks. It was and remains a favorite gathering place for Aktau youth. Now there is such a concept of parkour, so boys, young girls, wanting to get some kind of adrenaline rush, overcome boulders here, dive under stones, penetrate into rocky caves, thus somehow throwing out their youthful enthusiasm, their energy, and they enjoy it. To make this territory more passable for small children, their mothers, pregnant women, and elderly people, the idea arose of building such an interesting rock path here. The author of the project was Marat Sunikov, a resident of Aktau. The trail includes a pedestrian area with over 1,000 steps, 24 observation decks, a cave, piers and a parking lot with an access road. The construction was carried out by hand. 70% of the trail area is accessible to people with limited mobility. Now the townspeople and guests of Aktau can enjoy this stunning sea view with comfort. We are sailing past the territory where the author has realized the dream of the inhabitants of the peninsula to see the waterfall. You will see here waterfalls, they are very small, but the water is drinkable. Tatiana Alimovna told how small waterfalls were formed. It turns out that the rocks formed from shell rock are porous inside. When the pores are filled with water, excess moisture is released to the surface and thus waterfalls appear. The length of the rocky path is 1.5 kilometers, and the material from which the footpath is made was specially selected in accordance with the climate of these places. 
The advantage of the project is that it harmoniously fits into the natural landscape, complements and transforms it. So an interesting idea of the creators was the installation of projectors and lamps, speakers for musical accompaniment, as well as the use of projectors for broadcasting various dynamic images on a smooth section of a white rock. Video and sound equipment, in addition to entertainment, makes it possible to ensure the safety of walking and alert in case of emergencies. Turkey. Instead of going to Turkey or Spain, come to rest in Aktau. Ah, life is beautiful. And now a real sea extreme. This board is called a pad. SUP is an abbreviation from English stand up paddle, which means to stand with an oar. Everything seems to be simple. You are standing on a board with a paddle and all the muscles of the body work. I didn't succeed in standing on the oar right away, but even while sitting, it was quite difficult to maintain balance. Your knees should be on the print. These are my prints. Sit on your knees immediately. That's it. Now sit down. Legs. Legs. Can you keep the balance? Yes, yes. Now a second. Hold it, huh? Everything is fine, don't even think while standing. Don't turn the wing. Fine, and now try. Don't rush. Subboard. Pedal board. Subboard is not an easy thing. I fell down after all, and the water was cold. The guys on the yard controlled the situation and picked me up on time. Emotions go wild, adrenaline is rushing. I like Aktau more and more. <laughs> I now understand why millionaires are so eager to buy a yacht. You feel really free there. You can swim wherever you want. Romance. Axia would love it too. On one of the central streets of Burabai there is a nature museum. The difference between this museum and others is that here you can not only get acquainted with the exhibits, but also visit the nearest zoo. The entrance fee is not very expensive, 1,000 tenge for adults and 800 tenge for children under 14 years old. There are four main halls in the museum. The first one presents the field and stab game of the resort, the second, waterfowl, meadow and bog representatives of the fauna. Among them, 32 species of waterfowl and 19 species of meadow birds. In the third hall, you will see an overview model of the forestry and hunting economy, exhibits with various types of diseases of trees and shrubs, as well as a collection of minerals. The fourth hall will surprise you with an exposition of wild animals inhabiting the Borobai territory. What attracted me in the halls about the fauna is that all animals and birds are presented in natural size. While I looked at stuffed animals, it's time to move to the zoo. We have predatory animals. These are bears, wolves, there is a raccoon dog. We also have birds. These are guinea fowls, a pheasant, and there are firebirds.
In total, the zoo is home to over 30 species of animals and birds. The zoo is open every day from 10 a.m. to 7.30 p.m., except Monday. I especially liked the ponies and yaks, probably because they willingly grunted the carrots I offered and allowed me to pet them. Parents with small children are frequent visitors to the zoo. The idea of a petting zoo is just for them. In the modern world, the attitude toward zoos is ambiguous. There are more and more opinions that keeping animals in zoos, especially patting ones is inhumane. I asked what Isilu thinks about this as a person working directly in this institution. I generally have a good attitude to zoos, if of course there is good care for animals, and of course there should be a special attitude towards animals. Each animal has its own kind of sensation. Isolu said that animals get used to specialists who constantly take care of them. Animals recognize them. Zoo workers give them nicknames and talk to them. Animals reciprocate affection. Yaks, fellow deer and ponies have had good offspring this year. This indicates that the zoo's inhabitants feel safe and stress-free. According to the Akim of Akmola region, it is planned to turn the zoo into a safari park and move it outside the village. In the meantime, for the first time in 10 years, serious changes have taken place here. Fences were replaced throughout the territory, benches and trash cans were installed on the sidewalks, digital information plates with QR code were installed near each animal. In this regard, this year we are working on the reconstruction of the zoo. Open air cages of predatory animals, especially wolves and bears, are being expended. This year is very good for them. I don't know for how many years the enclosures for predatory animals have not been expended. I am very glad that the living conditions of the animals are improving. Still, spending your entire life in captivity, albeit in satiety, is not easy. I also always wondered how the zoo workers deal with predators. I'm a coward. I couldn't have. Well, you have to have a special relationship. Our employees have been working here for a long time, and the wolves are already used to them too. They know that the enclosure will be cleaned, that a second enclosure will open. The wolves themselves already know that we need to go into this enclosure and clear this area. No problem, the animal care worker opens the enclosure, calls animal by name, then he enters and he calmly comes in, cleans up. Wolves have long been accustomed to this. This schedule is familiar for all animals. The zoo is a wonderful place in Burabai where you will meet interesting animals and kind people who look after them. Be sure to visit this location upon arrival in Burabai. We spend two wonderful summer days here. The prices, by the way, turned out to be reasonable, but there were not so many people due to the pandemic. But the summer months feed the businessmen of these places all year round. The traveler Rawan Yeskali offers to use the natural resources of Burabai throughout the year. Burabai, Bayanaul, and indeed the whole of northern Kazakhstan have their own peculiarities. They only work for one season, during June, July and August. For the remaining nine months, all these objects go into sleep mode. I would say that in this regard, we have drawbacks. Why not use the objects of Burabai, Bayanaul, their beauty and nature all 12 months of the year? Why not develop winter tourism? There are plenty of opportunities for this. Twenty-five minutes flew by, but how much useful information we managed to tell you! In the Mangistau Local History Museum, I learned how the oil industry was born in Kazakhstan. And from the yacht off the coast of Aktau, I saw the famous Rocky Trail. I investigated how the animals are kept in the Burabai Zoo and learned the real history of the Abilai Khan Meadow. On this, let's say goodbye to Burabai and continue to explore northern Kazakhstan. Follow us on the Across the Kazakhland hashtag.